Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about kernel modules. So we're going to be learning about listing them, getting more info on them, and then playing around with the parameters. All right, so pretty much kernel modules are pieces of code that can be loaded or unloaded into the kernel upon demand. They extend the functionality of the kernel without the need to reboot the system. A module can be configured as a built-in or loadable. To dynamically load or remove a module, it has to be configured as a loadable module in the kernel configuration. So there are several advantages that come with kernel modules. So first of all, the kernel does not have to rebuild your kernel um, as often, or the kernel basically you don't have to rebuild it as often. It saves time and prevents the possibility of introducing an error in rebuilding and reinstalling the base kernel. Once you have a working base kernel, it is good to leave it untouched as long as possible. So uh, the good thing is it's easier to diagnose system problems. A bug in a device driver, which is bound into the kernel, can stop the system from booting at all. It can also be really hard to tell which part of the base kernel caused the trouble. So if the same device driver is a module, the base kernel is up and running before the device driver even gets loaded. So if the system dies after the base kernel is up and running, it's an easy matter to track the problem down to the troublemaking device driver and, not, and just not load that device driver until the problem is fixed. So, and also too, the good thing about modules, it can save uh, memory because they are loaded only when the system is actually using them. All parts of the base kernel stay loaded in real storage, not just virtual storage. And also, modules are much faster to maintain and debug. Um, so what will require a full reboot, to, full reboot to do a system, to do a file system driver built into the kernel? Um, pretty much it can be done with a few quick commands using modules. So it's possible to try out different parameters or even change the code repeatedly in a rapid succession without waiting for it to boot or w without waiting for a boot uh, which is cool I mean basically you don't have to reboot it and everything um, so modules are not slower um, by the way than the base uh, kernel modules um, so calling either one is simply a branch to the memory location where it resides so um, to actually get the location of them you can go to user lib slash modules and then we can use this subshell and this one will be you name this will give you the kernel info and then we go to kernel so let me make sure I spell that one correct we got modules we got the subshell you name dash r and then slash kernel so this is the directory so we do ls that one Okay, so this gives you more information. So as we go over here, we can see the directories here. So basically this directory stores the object libraries and shared libraries that are necessary to run certain commands, including the kernel code. So these directories are only necessary if you wish to rebuild your kernel with new modules included or old modules removed. Um, so the first one is ARCH, which stands for the Architecture Specific Kernel Code. Um, so it has further subdirectories, um, one per supported architecture. For example, I386 and Alpha. And then we have the, what's the next one? We have init. We go over the init one. I don't see init on this one or MM. So if you see MM here, it pretty much is a directory that contains all the memory management code. Um, the architecture uh, specific memory management code lives down there and then we have your drivers so pretty much all of the systems device drivers live in this uh, directory uh, they are also further subdivided into classes of device driver for example like block devices all right and then we also have the block is pretty much obvious uh, we have the kernel uh, the main kernel code um, again, it's architecture specific. Um, we have the net, which is the kernel networking code. We have the lib, which is the, um, the directory that contains the um, kernel's library code. And same thing as architecture specific. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm not sure with crypto, haven't uh, really messed around with that. FS, I think, is for the file system. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's get started. So what we're going to do is first start out with mod info. Actually, no, let's do LS mod. That makes more sense, right? So this will list all the modules. On the left side, you can see the first column is the module name. The middle column is the size. And then the third one is 
the the amount of times that is being used like the instances of it so as you can see the ones that have like numbers like one three those are being used zero means that is not being used so as you can see on the right side those are the dependencies so these are the other things that are using it so drm kms helper so these are the things that are using this actual module all right and to get more information um, let's get information on tls module so this one will give us the metadata on um, the file name where it's located um, where i showed you guys in the beginning so for this one is located in kernel slash net slash tls slash tls kernel object um, and then uh, qz and then alias is tls the description is transport layer security support this one doesn't have any parameters so we're going to show you one with parameters which is called um, nf contract and this is the one that we're going to mess with so nf contract um, is pretty much a net filter so if you go on the bottom you can see the parameters there so those parameters down there um, t stamp enable connection tracking flow time stamping so it's a boolean so it's either a yes or a no so how we can check um, what's the current what's the current uh, module or not not module but the actual boolean enabled on there so we can do nf contract Okay, let me make sure I got that correct. Let me see why it's not showing it. Should be on here. Oh, maybe I don't have the module loaded. Let me load this module real quick. Let's see. Let's try mod probe. Make sure this is loaded. So we're going to do sys module slash n. All right, there's nf contract. I didn't have it loaded, so that's why it wasn't showing. All right, and then we're going to go to parameter, and then t. Let's see, let's list this real quick. So now we list this. We can see t stamp on here, and then we're going to cap the actual file. It's like an ASCII file. With the value and it says no it's actually not on and the parameter is a boolean so it's either yes or no so now what we're going to do we're going to remove this module all right so um i already stopped the firewall d service so this is one of the dependencies so um, the firewall d depends on this module so i already disabled or um stopped the service so just make sure if you're messing around with modules make sure that you know that what's um what other programs or daemons uses it um, that way you can uh, safely do it. So um, after you remove it, now you just have to add it back. So the um, mod probe dash R just removes the module. And then this will add it back. And then now I'm going to give it a parameter of yes. All right. So once I do that, now if I cat the same one, you see now the module is loaded back into the system with the parameter yes. So as you see those parameters there, um, pretty much gives it extra functionality. So some of the modules have parameters and this is how you load it and unload it. Um, and then you can also do it by RM mod, but I like to use mod probe for it. Uh, yep, and that's pretty much it for the kernel modules, not much to it um, for this video. So we went over mod info, which gives you more info on a specific um, module, LS mod, loads all the modules, gives you a lot more information and then we can do and then we can also check for the location under um, sys modules and that's where we find um, most of the modules is under this one so slash let me go back so sys yeah my bad so it's under sys so under sys module and this is where you get all the module information for press yes so these are the modules right now so same thing as the ls mod so when you run ls mod it is the same thing as that just um you know this is the actual directory of where it's located so let's try to check that again just to verify it and do ls 
And yep, this is the directory right here. It gives you all the module and the one that we messed with with NF contract, as you can see there. NF contract is enabled, and then the per, one of the per, one of the parameters there are enabled for the um, TS step. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, you guys have a great day, and uh, thank you guys for watching.